North Carolina is just 5-18 over the past two seasons. But can Mac Brown's return turn the Tar Heels around? Find out here on the Gridiron Expert. Yeah! yeah. Nothing seemed to go right for the Tar Heels in 2018. They were hit with tons of injuries over the course of the season. They had some suspensions at the beginning of the season, and they had five losses by just one possession. So a 2-9 and nine season could very well have been a 7-4 and four season for North Carolina. But Mac Brown returns to Chapel Hill where he coached the Tar Heels from 1988 to 1997, and he's looking to make North Carolina relevant again in the ACC. The Tar Heels returned 14 starters total, 7 on offense and 7 on defense. And the key to this offense for North Carolina will be their running game. They have a three-headed monster with Javante Williams, Antonio Williams, and Michael Carter. Now, the pass game is going to be the biggest question for UNC going into 2019. Nathan Elliott is gone. He was the big starter for them last year before he went down with an injury. And they did put Cade Fortin in there at times, but he also got hurt. I believe the nod will go to true freshman Sam Howell, who was phenomenal during his high school days in North Carolina and who Mac Brown seems to be very high on going into 2019. But starting a true freshman quarterback always brings its questions and concerns going into a brand new season. The defense also returned seven starters. They allowed 34.5 points per game in 2019. They're going to have to see some major improvements, and it might not come this year as they lose their top three tacklers. Their strength on defense, though, will be in the secondary, led by Miles Dorn and Patrice Reen. So hopefully they can uh, show up against the pass game against some of the better quarterbacks in the ACC. But they face a tough SEC quarterback in the season opener, which has not been kind to North Carolina over the past few years. UNC has lost their past four season openers, dating all the way back to 2015, when they last met South Carolina, a 17-13 loss for the Tar Heels. South Carolina, just like North Carolina, returns 14 starters total, 7 on offense and 7 on defense, but their offense going to be pretty dangerous this year with a veteran quarterback in Jake Bentley, Rico Dattle at running back, and a crazy crew of wide receivers that will really benefit Bentley in the SEC this season. I believe that this offense is going to be too much for a defense that's looking to really try to improve from UNC, but probably won't be that way in week one. This game being played in Charlotte, of course, a neutral site, but South Carolina gets the win over UNC, North Carolina starts 0-1 on the year. You also have to keep in mind how dangerous Will Muschamp's defenses are as he has been defensive coordinator over the course of the SEC and his defenses have been strong at South Carolina during his time there. They go back home, their first true home game facing off against Miami, a team that is coming off a bye because they will be playing in week zero against Florida on August 24th. This Miami team, though, going to be scary good in 2019. And a lot of people don't want to believe that because they just went 7-6 and six last year. But I can't stress it enough how impressed I am with Manny Diaz. I said that he is the best hire going into the 2019 season. He brings in a great coaching staff with Dan Enos as offensive coordinator. And with him as a quarterback whisperer dealing with the transfer from Ohio State and Tate Martell, uh, Miami could very well win the ACC Coastal in 2019. Their defense was phenomenal when Manny Diaz was defensive coordinator. I expect it to stay the same, if not better, in 2019. And even though this game is at home, North Carolina will drop their first ACC game of the season against Miami in Week 2. They start off the season 0-2. They go on the road to Wake Forest, and this is not going to be an easy game, but it is an intriguing game because Wake Forest is an ACC team, yet this game will be qualified or counted as a non-conference game. So they go on the road to the Demon to face the Demon Deacons, but it will not go on either team's conference records. Regardless of that, though, North Carolina will drop this game to Wake Forest. Once again, they're going up against a dangerous quarterback in Jamie Newman that can't only beat you through the air, but can also beat you on the ground. They return five starters on defense, so maybe if North Carolina's offense gets a little bit going, they can put up some numbers and hang with the Demon Deacons over the course of this game. But with it being on the road, I don't feel good about it. I think North Carolina drops their third straight of the season. And then here you go against Appalachian State. This is not an easy win for the Tar Heels. You see, we've already given them an automatic win against Mercer. I don't think they have any difficulty against them. But Appalachian State, a team from the Sun Belt, is one that is tough against any team, regardless of how good uh, they are, what conference they are in. They nearly beat Tennessee a few years ago. They nearly beat Penn State last year in the season opener. And this team for App State is going to be freaky good. They returned 10 starters on the offensive side of the ball. That includes their quarterback, Zach Thomas. That includes their 1,000-yard rusher and Darrington Evans. 
This also includes a defense that returned six starters and allowed just 15.5 points per game last year. The only thing that doesn't benefit Appalachian State going into this game is that they lose their head coach and Scott Satterfield, who left to take the Louisville job in the ACC. I do think North Carolina ekes out a win over Appalachian State. This game will be extremely close, and I would not be surprised in the slightest, in the least bit, if Appalachian State pulls off this win. But I think Mac Brown, being the legendary coach that he is, being the guy that he is, gets this win over Appalachian State. But it is going to be close and definitely going to give North Carolina State or North Carolina fans some scares. Then they stay at home and face off against Clemson. I think we can automatically mark that down as a loss. I don't see anybody beating Clemson in the ACC this year, in the regular season this year. Uh, Clemson, unfortunately for North Carolina, drawing them out of the Atlantic Division, boasting the best quarterback, in my opinion, in the nation, and Trevor Lawrence. Travis Etienne in the backfield, the greatest uh, uh, crew of wide receivers in the nation, in my opinion, with Amari Rodgers and Justin Ross uh, and T. Higgins. And a defense that, yes, loses a lot of starters, and I think that's what people are freaking out about, thinking maybe Clemson will drop a game or maybe can't repeat as national champions because of that loss on defense. But you have to believe in Davo Sweeney and what he did last year. He knew he was going to be losing those players, and that's why he played so many in 2018. North Carolina will fall to Clemson very handily uh, later, uh, midway through the season at the end of September. They go on the road to Georgia Tech, and this is a game that very well could win, be a win for North Carolina. I'm just not going to mark it down as one now. I'm giving them a loss to the Yellow Jackets. This is a game that they are also going up against a brand new head coach and Jeff Collins. And this is a game that I think could be very low scoring because I could see both offenses struggling here because Jeff Collins switching Georgia Tech from that option offense we saw under Paul Johnson to a more pro-style offense uh, where they would be throwing the ball a lot more. They will certainly test this UNC secondary, without a doubt. But if Georgia Tech's offense struggles, which I think it will, especially in, if North Carolina's offense struggles, which I think it will with a brand new quarterback, this could be a low scoring game. But Georgia Tech does own home field advantage, and I think they get the slight edge over UNC to get the win there. They get a bye week going into October 19th against Virginia Tech. Last year, UNC nearly beat the Hokies. They only lost 22-19. to One of those five games we talked about, they lost by just one possession. But that was not a very good Virginia Tech team last year. They struggled mightily, uh, allowing over 30 points per game. They lost Josh Jackson at quarterback. This year, they're going to be completely different. 10 returning starters on the defensive side of the ball. That's going to be phenomenal for Bud Foster, one of the best defensive coordinators in the entire nation. Virginia Tech could very well win the ACC Coastal, competing against the likes of of Virginia and Miami. They return Ryan Willis at quarterback, who I thought did a phenomenal job stepping in for Josh Jackson last year. Even though North Carolina is coming off a week of rest, they cannot go on the road and defeat Virginia Tech. They fall to the Hokies here. Then they come back home to face off in a rivalry game. And when you are in a rivalry game, you can throw records out the window. So even though North Carolina is only a one-loss team at the time, they're going to be 1-6 and six going into this Duke game. It doesn't matter. Teams always wake up for their games against their rivals. Unfortunately for the Tar Heels, they have lost the last three to the Blue Devils, and they have all been fairly close games, losing those three games by an average of just six points. So 18 combined points over the past three years. Duke loses their star QB in Daniel Jones, replaces him with Quentin Harris, who had playing experience last year when Daniel Jones was out with an injury. But Duke returns eight starters on the defensive side of the ball. That will be the key in this one. I think they are going to be able to shut down a North Carolina offense that I think will struggle. You never want to underestimate a David Cutcliffe team, and I'm very excited to see Matt Brown go up against David Cutcliffe, two coaches that I have a lot of respect for. But in the end, Cutcliffe gets the best of Brown in this one, and North Carolina falls once again for the fourth straight year to the Blue Devils. They play another home game against Virginia, and I can't stress enough how much I can say that Virginia is the real deal in 2019, one of the best teams in the ACC. They will boast one of the best team, uh, defenses in the entire nation. North Carolina has to be able to shut down Bryce Perkins in this game, and this is a legitimate trap game for Virginia because they will be in the ACC Coastal uh, hunt this late in the season. The beginning of November, they will be up there with maybe one or just two losses and certainly having their eyes set on an ACC title appearance. They can't afford to overlook a North Carolina team that's going to be hungry for a win. But they weren't able to shut down Bryce Perkins last year, who, like Jamie Newman, can beat you through the air and can certainly beat you on the ground. I think Virginia's defense steps it up big in this one. They look, uh, and North Carolina falls to the Cavaliers. 
They get another bye week going into this game against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh was just one of the two wins for UNC last year, and they barely won that game, beating the Panthers 38-35. to And like I said, a lot of people expect this season for UNC to be fairly solid under Mac Brown because of how competitive they were last year, because they're getting a coach that has plenty of experience. It's not like they're promoting some brand-new head coach. Mac Brown, yeah, he's been out of the coaching game for a while, but he has experience. So a lot of people think that because North Carolina was so competitive, because they bring back 14 starters, because they bring back an experienced head coach, they might be able to crack six or seven wins. But this schedule doesn't do them any favors. On the road against Pittsburgh, yes, they lose their top two rushers in Quadre Olsen and Darren Hall, but they do return Kenny Pickett on offense, and they do have a decent defense. Pat Narduzzi's teams always play well towards the end of the season. This game is on the road. They will fall to the Pittsburgh Panthers. And I know that's going to be a devastating loss. They're obviously out of bowl contention by this point anyways, but it's going to stink to not even have a potential win in ACC conference play, especially against a Pittsburgh team that I expect to struggle in 2019. They get that win over Mercer, as we said, and then on the road against North Carolina State. As I mentioned, when you face a rival, you just throw records out the window. NC State, like Duke, another UNC rival, loses their star quarterback in Ryan Finley, but the defense will be the strength for the Wolfpack. Also, like Duke, UNC has dropped the last three to NC State, so maybe they are due again a win against the Wolfpack, especially after just losing 34 to 28 in overtime last season. But this game is on the road. Matt McKay and the Wolfpack offense will pick things up towards the, at the very end of the season. By this point, they will have worked everything out. The defense will remain a strength for them. You never want to underestimate a Dave Doran team either. He has always proved me wrong. I think they get a win over their rival in the Tar Heels. And that is, unfortunately for North Carolina, another two-win season going in or to finish the 2019 season. And that is not what UNC fans want to hear. I know. Three wins just two years ago, two wins last year, and now two wins in 2019. But keep in mind, Matt Brown's first two years with North Carolina back in 1988 and 1989, he went 1-11 both years. He was 2-20. Eventually, he got them to an 11-win team. So I truly believe that Matt Brown is the right man for the job. But this schedule and this team is just not the year for Matt Brown in North Carolina. But they will get there very, very soon. But a 2-10 season for the Tar Heels. But be patient. He will get them back on the right track and relevant in the ACC, much like they were in 2015 when they made an ACC title appearance. So guys, as always, thank you for watching us here. Make sure you go check us out on Twitter at Gridiron Expert. Check us out on our website, thegridironexpert.com, where you can sign up for our newsletter, check out our videos, and sign up for our expert picks for just a low fee, you will be able to receive all of our spread picks for the 2019 season, including the postseason. That's 150 plus spread picks for just one fee. That's something you cannot miss out on. You do not want to miss out on an opportunity you've got to take advantage of. And guys, as always, thank you for watching us here on YouTube. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time here on The Gridiron Expert.